Good afternoon, folks. Jordan here with the Nutty Gnome Homestead. Today is February 17th, 2023, and we are out here in the greenhouse up potting some of our elderberry cuttings. So, if you guys remember, on February 19th, I took you guys along and showed you how we take our cuttings from our elderberry plants and put them in a rooting compound, whether it's uh, soil, sand, cocoa core, peat moss, anything of the like and get them to root. This is how we propagate our plants for free. So about a month ago we took these cuttings, I put some of them in uh, a few pots to see if they would take root and today I have checked to see and they have. So we are going to put them in their own individual pots today that was so we can go ahead and create a new plant to when the weather is a little more conducive it will actually be planted outside. So let me turn you guys around here and I'll show you what we're dealing with. Okay, so what we have here are five York elderberry cuttings that we put in some moist sand and set in a light but out of direct sunlight location. So these were actually sitting in our kitchen uh, for the last month. And we've been putting them outside a couple of times <clears throat> a week to try to get them hardened off and because the, the elderberries can take a little bit of cold. However, we had a frost the other day, and it did nip a couple of our tips of our cuttings here. So, they should be able to bounce back. But anyway, I wanted to show you guys these roots. Let me zoom in here and show you these roots. They are actually coming out. These little white things right here. These are the roots that are coming out of the sand of this bucket. I'm going to gently tug on this. And we should be able to get this nice little root ball to come out. Wow. Folks, I kid you not, this is one month of being in the sand. Today is March 17th. These were planted February 19th. Several dozen beautiful roots and a nice healthy cutting. That cutting is probably a, a foot or more in length. Try to get the whole thing in the in the frame at once. And do you see those roots? That is just amazing. So what we're going to do, and like I said, this is the York variety. So, oh, I'm sorry, these were planted on 221. So, just a couple days shy of three weeks. So, I have our potting soil here. This is the potting soil that we mix up. Here on our homestead, this is the, the peat moss, perlite, and compost that we make. And I don't want these too terribly deep. About half the size of this bucket. This is a six inch pot. I'm going to put these in here, and I want to make sure that the roots are angled down. I don't want any roots going up. If they go up, they're going to try to grow up, and they will actually end up pruning themselves off whenever they reach the air. You don't want any kind of air pruning on these roots. So we're just going to go around here, and I'm going to fill in this pot. I've wanted the York and the Bob Gordon variety of elderberries for several years. Finally broke down and bought a couple of cuttings. I'm glad I did. Some more our potting mix up here. Now the elderberries, like I said, they can handle some cold, they can handle some moisture. They do tend to thrive in places where other plants don't like to grow. Uh, we have a high water table on part of our farm here. So places that will actually hold a lot of moisture are perfect for growing things like elderberries. We make wine and gummies and elderberry syrup from the berries that we collect here on the, on the farm. So there we have one transplanted elderberry cutting. Now I'm going to do the rest of these and then I'm going to label them all at the same time. So hang on just a second and I'll be right back. 
I see some more roots here, so I'm going to show you guys a couple more of these. This is the same York variety. We try to keep this sand nice and wow, nice and moist. So if you'll notice here, it's a real good example. Elderberry nodes are opposite. So we've got the nodes here facing this direction. The nodes here go this direction. That's where these roots came from. And there's about a dozen healthy roots on this plant. This is a lot shorter cutting. It's a little bit thicker than a pencil, about the size of a Sharpie. And it's got plenty of healthy roots on it. I'll set this one aside. Let me look at the rest of these. Wow. Now we used rooting hormone on this. You do not have to use rooting hormone. They uh, they are pretty much like weeds. They will grow just about anywhere. And I really like the sand for propagating these. Man, look at those roots. And folks, you can see on, the, on my tag, these were York cuttings, 221-23. So less than a month ago, these were rooted. So here's one that's a little stunted, but it does have some roots on it. Let me actually rinse this off in some water. So it does have some roots. We're going to go ahead and plant it up. It does have a little bit of green up here at the node. This other node doesn't appear to show any green on it, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and plant this up anyway. I've got no problem planting this. I'm pretty sure it'll go ahead and survive. Like I was saying, elderberries are practically weeds. They will grow just about anywhere in just about any kind of condition. Since this is not that big of a, a cutting, I'm just going to use one of my little 4-inch pots here. And we're just going to top it off. I want to make sure that these guys have plenty of room to grow. I'm going to make sure it's well potted. And there we have a 4 inch potted York elderberry cutting. Now some of these other cuttings here are quite a bit bigger. I'm just going to go ahead and use a 6 inch pot on them. Make sure all the, the roots are facing down or at least horizontal. I got some there in the back that I'll have to push down. Now as it warms up, these cuttings are going to take off. They're going to start putting on a lot of growth. There's a very good chance they will go ahead and flower and possibly fruit this first year. I'm going to try not to let them fruit this first year. Only because I want them to establish a healthy root system. I don't want them to put their energy into growing fruit instead of establishing the plant. So hopefully next year I can get some decent berries. And these are just extra leftover pots that I had. Nothing special. I do try to size the pot to the, the size of the cutting, but it's not that important. Most of these are going to be in four or six inch pots. Like you see here, this one is a little too small. So I'm going to try to find another pot real quick. Alright, I found another 6 inch pot. And this compost is full of organic matter. 
it'll hold moisture well has good drainage so we're not going to have to worry about any kind of rot with these so let me move the soil out of the way and you can reuse your sand there's no problem with that uh, it's not going to get used up there's no real nutrients in the sand and we just use it for uh, propagation purposes and there is our five elderberry cuttings that have rooted in less than a month I'm tickled pink with how these have uh, produced and how they've taken off okay guys I thought I better show you the Bob Gordon variety too while we're at it these were also planted on February 21st as you can see we got this one that's kind of stunted and these are also planted in the sand these were a lot smaller cuttings uh, they don't seem as vigorous as the York they came from the same farm so this one only has one little root node on it so we shall see how this one produces I got a feeling that one's probably not going to make it. Here's another one. It's not really doing good. It's swelling up at the bottom. I think it might have a little bit of rot going on. But we'll see. And a couple more roots on this Bob Gordon. So I'll get these guys planted up too as well. So we have these all potted up now these were all out of the sand they all had okay roots not as good as the york variety did but i think they'll uh, they'll make it i'll get those guys moved away and we'll move on to the next ones so what we have here are the york variety of cuttings that we put in our uh potting mix now these are going to be in here a little tighter. They're not going to be as easy to pull out as our um, cuttings that we had in the sand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to push the whole mass out. And right away you can see we have quite a few leaves or uh, roots. And we're just going to gently try to break this root ball apart. We're going to try to tease these out. These actually probably should have been potted up a week ago. Because these guys are tangled in here pretty good. Okay, so like I said, this is the York variety. And they've got just as good of roots as the ones that I had in the sand. So this, uh, this method of propagating these cuttings works just as well. Wow, that's amazing. All of these cuttings have excellent roots. And guys, these were planted three weeks ago. This is the one that has the least amount. And it's not as bad. So let me get some uh, cups of soil over here and we'll get these guys planted up too. Okay, so just like with the, the ones that were started in the sand, I'm moving these guys to 6 inch pots, making sure the roots are all facing down or horizontal at the very least. And I'm going to fill these up. These guys are actually doing very well, better than expected. Especially considering they got hit with a frost the other night. Had I known it was going to frost as hard as it did, I would have had these guys moved into the greenhouse where they'd have been a lot better protected. Now these varieties are going to produce big berries 
with a higher sugar content. So they should be a little bit better for making wine and jam and jellies and so on and so forth. But I just can't believe the roots. Look at those roots. For having only been in the the rooting media for less than a month. That's why I'm a fan of using sand to propagate. The soilless potting mix here, the peat moss, compost, and perlite, it does very well. However, it still compacts on your roots, which makes them a little more difficult to push through. Which, they will still work, just I think the sand is a little bit better option. This is why we do most of our propagating in sand. These are going to be some nice healthy plants. I think this one has the best roots out of all of them that came out of this pot. So here are our five York cuttings that were in the potting mix. They all rooted fairly well. Let's check out the ones that uh, the Bob Gordon variety that we had in the potting mix too. So if you can see this is our Bob Gordon variety, planted on the same day. And we are doing our best to try to get these out of here and see how well they rooted. They got a few roots. It got rained on last night, so they're a little saturated. One that didn't make it. One that could possibly still make it. One with a few roots that are probably five and a half inches long. A nice big cutting, but has no roots. And this one here has got a couple of roots in the root ball. So, we got a couple successful out of that. I do like the, the sand better. You can see how much moisture this has in it right now. Like I said, these got rained on and that's super saturated. So, I'll get that mixed up and... We'll get these guys potted. So here are four of the five Bob Gordon varieties of elderberries that I believe survived the cutting process. These two here, I'm not sure they're going to make it. They have no roots on them whatsoever. So I might take them back up inside and give them a little more TLC. These two here have quite a few roots on them. I think they're going to be fine, even though they got a little nipped by the frost last night. So, I know the, the sand works well. I'm going to keep sticking with the sand for the, the propagation. So there you have it, folks. That is the difference between putting cuttings in sand versus the potting soil. We did this little experiment to see which would produce better results. I had a pretty good idea the sand was going to produce better results. Just for the sheer fact of it drains better and there is less obstructions for the roots to have to overcome as they start pushing through. We did find that the Bob Gordon cuttings produced about half as many roots as the York cuttings did overall in both the potting soil and the sand. But it was also nice to see that our cuttings in sand were about three to four times the size, root-wise, of the cuttings that were in the, the potting soil. So, I appreciate you guys coming along for this uh, little experiment. I was happy to show you all how we take our cuttings and produce new plants from the plants we already have here on the farm. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to shoot me a message or leave a message down below. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know. 
Until next time, I appreciate you guys coming along, and y'all be safe.